your ruler. Salt. Your lands, your possessions, your very lives will gladly be given in tribute to me. What's up, guys? So this video is going to be nostalgic, the problem, the convenient problem with Kang. And I'm going to be straight up, like, I didn't really have a problem with Kang other than, other than the, uh, the plot hole of his technology being so advanced uh, to cross timelines and multiverses and all that stuff, but he, he couldn't figure out how to get out of the quantum realm. Meanwhile, Cassie could. That that is my only problem with Kang. But anyways, let's jump into it. Um, unrelated, off topic. I, I'm like, my beard is really bugging me, dude. I'm trying to give myself a beard trim soon. I'm trying to take some length off and get it nice and short. I mean. The alternative is I just shave it off completely, but that's right now that's not even an option. Like I'm trying because a because I'm trying to give myself a haircut and trim my beard, but even if I wanted to just take the whole thing off, I can't because my trimmer won't work. My trimmer went from working to now acting like a, I'm 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 Superman and Superman f and Superman Four, the quest for peace when they're trying to cut Superman's hair. And it won't cut, and they're like, "What the hell?" It's like, it's like the 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 hair on my head and my beard is like a steel cord. The thing, I I, I took it up, I took apart the 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 thing, right? And I took apart the, I unscrewed all the pieces. I checked the blades. The blades are still seemingly sharp. I mean, they feel sharp. I don't know. Um, and I put it back together. This will not cut. It will not cut. Like I don't know. Am I turning into Wolverine? <laughs> am I turning into? Am I turning into Superman? I don't know. But I gotta order a new trimmer. Um. But yeah, it's like you you know that feeling where you feel like oh shit, like oh you feel trapped. Like I feel trapped. Like I want this hair off of me, but I don't have the tools to do it, and so I feel trapped. Right? It's completely unrelated to the video, but I feel so trapped. So I gotta wait till the beginning of, uh, so like the week after next. Cause I, cause I, I didn't have, I was, I didn't have money set aside to have to buy a new, a trimmer, right? I only had money set aside for groceries, so it's like, oh crap. Anyways, first week of June should be more presentable. Hopefully. We'll see. I got it. Well, anyway, so let's jump into this video. And here we go. And just who are you? I've been dubbed many. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't know why this... This right here, right? It always... The YouTube volume always sets itself to the middle. Now, I don't know... I don't know why it does it, but I think there's like a, I think it has to do with the num key, the numpad, and so it like resets the volume or something. I don't know. It drives me nuts. I always have to double check it, but I maxed out the volume, otherwise people can't hear the video. And just who are you? I've been dubbed many names by many people. He who remains a jerk. This is He Who Remains. He served as a villainous opening salvo across the bow of the MCU, a character that was obviously intended to be a variant of the big bad for the next chapter of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There's only one problem. When we were finally introduced to the real big bad, Kang the Conqueror in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, he was distinctly more Kang the Disappointment. Who is Kang? Who I need to be. As a disclaimer, this video was produced prior to the allegations against Jonathan Majors. We hope that the truth behind the allegations can be revealed. Dude, I don't even know what the allegations are, bro. I just heard about this like today. I, I did, I, and I didn't even really hear about it. I just heard that, I just heard that A, Disney may be firing him, and B, he may be going to prison. 
I have no idea what he's accused accused of. I have no idea what what he allegedly uh, is accused of doing. I'm assuming it's as it always is these days, some sort of some sort of sexual assault allegations. But uh, I have no idea. I I don't know nothing about it. I'll do that. I'll do that in the next video after this. Um, look into it. But um, anyways, but. Let's go back to that scene. That scene, I love that scene. What will you do if you get out? Stands up. When? <laughs> I love Soon, it. however, for time being, we're only focusing on the character Kang the Conqueror and how he was depicted within the MCU. The MCU transpires in distinct phases, and much like how the comics work, these phases often feature large thematic elements that much like how the Um, I like this chart. This is a really cool, this is a really cool chart right here. Uh, so, the best phase was, actually, you know what, phase 1, phase 2, and phase 3 were, were all really good. I thought so. Hmm, that's tough. One, two, and three was really good, but there was some stinkers. Thor: The Dark World was kind of shit. Uh, Iron Man three was kind of poo. But other than that, all the rest of them were good. The Winter Soldier was really good. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One and Two were really awesome. Um, anyways, but the, the phase one through three was really good. The only phase that has really been kind of crap lately, or actually that's not true. Okay, that is true. The only phase that's been kind of crappy was phase four. I don't understand how they're including Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 in phase four. That should go in phase five. And this, in no way home, shouldn't be in phase four either because Marvel didn't even make that. They're 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 giving themselves too much leeway. Oh, it wasn't all bad. Look, we had we had three good movies, right? I'm not gonna say which three, but you can assume one, two, three. Um. Oh yeah. So the there was that I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about this. Like people can't people can't like just say, oh we had, like it just came out of nowhere. The MCU just went went com completely woke and went com completely to, to garbage. It just went garbage out of nowhere. They were showing you what they were planning to do right here, right here. The at the end of Infinity War the 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 cliffhanger the cliffhanger at the end of the infinity war when when nick fury calls captain marvel to save the day that was a sign of things to come and then it just got really bad right everyone that was your warning everyone i was like oh there it is it's over it's all over it's all over and end game so end game Everyone says it was really good compared to what we get nowadays, but Endgame already had a bunch of st stuff that dang near near it. like they had a bunch of stuff in it that dang near ruined it completely. And if you look into it, there was a whole bunch of scenes that they knew would get backlash, so they took it out. Like the Captain Marvel had way more scenes in Endgame, and they all removed it because they knew that it was too much too soon, and that they'd get a bunch of backlash. And they were already in the middle of getting backlash for it being completely asinine, that her being more powerful than Hulk and Thor, who she's not supposed to be supposed to be on par with like in the comics she's on par like with she-hulk right 
which she hulk is and let's not get into that but anyways um so in the end game it was going to be way worse than it was but they managed to and you can clearly see you can clearly see this that they cleaned it up and and because the, there's all they, they cleaned it up because there's a bunch of scenes missing that was in the trailer and there's that's not in the movie same for infinity war there's a bunch of scenes that was in the trailer that's not in the movie but um uh, even after they cleaned it up though even after they took all the stuff out that was too much too soon you still had two scenes where she completely wipes the floor with thanos right which is asinine because think about it think about it when thanos wipes the floor with hulk in infinity war he doesn't use any of the infinity stones to do so Thanos wipes the floor with Hulk just on his own without using any of the Infinity Stones, right? But in Endgame, Captain Marvel ragdolls and wipes the floor with Thanos not once but twice. And it's asinine that she can do that when the only reason she has powers is because she was exposed to one one infinity stone she didn't keep the infinity stone she was exposed to it briefly once that's it whereas the vision literally is an infinity stone and he can't do that right and so it just it's crazy. It's just crazy. It's crazy, crazy. I mean, there was, they did something cool in What If that was cool. It showed if it, if the Vision wanted to, he could have just cut Thanos in half right away. Um, but that's that's in What If. It's anyways. Let's continue. The comics work, these phases often feature large thematic elements that bind the films together and give them a sense of momentum. When the MCU was first announced in 2008, a slate of films building up to an unthinkable conclusion was released at Comic Con, an Avengers film. And then in 2012, when- Oh yeah, I remember. Oh, and the other things that they did was they made, they made Thor fat, and they made him the butt of the joke the whole movie. And also, they uh... They, uh, oh, there was a scene where they had, they had all of the female heroes do like a special montage, like on the battlefield, line up just females only, and then do like a, like a, like a, they just teed off, they teed off. It's like that's so dumb. It was so dumb. It was like a, it's girl only moment, girl only moment, and then. There was one thing else that they did, and I don't care, Shh, call me racist, I don't care, I really don't, call me racist all day long, I do not care, but it was really stupid, it was really stupid that he gave the mantle of Captain America to Sam, uh, Sam, uh, what's his last name, Sam Wilson, right, I think that's his last name, Sam Wilson, it was really dumb. Because Sam Wilson is already the Falcon, right? He's already the Falcon. He's already got his thing, right? And also, even though I enjoyed Winter Soldier or Falcon in the Winter Winter <laughs> Falcon in the Winter Soldier, even though I enjoyed that series, it was it was decent. It's a pretty pretty enjoyable watch compared to their other crap shows. Um, the costume they ultimately gave him in the end was stupid. Is a really dumb, flashy, dumb costume, and it's got wings. It's got wings. It's like okay, you're 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 Captain America, and you're the Falcon. You got wings, and you don't have the Super Soldier Serum. So it's it just does. It's it's like 
But everyone else has super soldier serum running through their veins, but you, Captain America, are the only one who doesn't. It's just, it's just ass backwards. And he got wings. So, I thought that was really dumb. And I thought the only reason they did that was because, for diversity's sake, because ultimately, at the end of the day, Bucky Barnes is his best friend. Now, he can be best friends with Sam Wilson, too, but the logical person to hand down the mantle to is Bucky Barnes. Because he's already a super soldier. I, I, I don't know, man. I just thought that was really dumb. And I thought it made no sense. And... I, 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 it felt forced. Like, oh, we're doing this. Like, here. This is yours because... Adversity. So there was, there was that there was a bunch of problems with end end game. Everyone holds it on a pedestal like end game was so good, but no, you could there were so many things, and it was it was if they hadn't heavily edited it, it would have been way worse. Um, but even with the edits, you could tell oh this is where we're going. This is all this all this stuff, and we're gonna get more of it, and they consistently amp up. When this experiment of building a franchise of interconnected films succeeded and actually did the unimaginable feat of making it to the projected... Oh, and about the Sam Wilson thing? Everyone agrees with me, in their gut. Everyone, everyone, you all, you all agree with me. You all agree with me, all, all walks of life. You all agree with me, you all thought that was weird. You all, you all in that moment, you all in that moment did not see that coming. You all in, in that moment were in that moment. You're like, oh, he's going to hand the shield to Bucky. And then he didn't, and he handed it to Sam. You all were equally as surprised as me. So don't for a second be like, how dare you, when you all thought the same thing in your gut. In Avengers film, the post-credits teaser featured a hint at where the universe itself would be building towards. Thanos, the mad titan in love with death and primary villain behind the Infinity Gauntlet. Throughout phases two and three, the MCU expertly built up Thanos as a brilliant tactician, master really manipulator, did. and immensely powerful so antagonist. Well but Marvel approached him intelligently. Built. They didn't put him in all of their movies. They just featured him in the first Guardians of the Galaxy film, as well as appearing in a mid credit sequence in Avengers Age of Ultron. When he finally does appear as the principal villain of Infinity War, the character's ability is so immense that he defeats the Hulk in the opening sequence, almost single-handedly takes out every Avenger over I'm the course of the about, film, man. and ultimately succeeds in his quest to annihilate half- That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about single-handedly rag dolls and wipes the floor with the code name strongest avenger the incredible hulk wipes the floor with all of the other avengers wipes the floor with all the guardians of the galaxies but captain marvel an insignificant mediocre uh like c rank character in the comics is now made to be the most powerful character over all of the other more powerful long-standing popular heroes because Disney had an agenda to push of girl empowerment and wokeism and you don't see how that's a slap in the face because in the comics even Rogue could beat Captain Marvel it's Rogue beat Captain Marvel, She Hulk beat, and She Hulk's not even powerful in the comics. Compared to, I know they made her powerful in the in the in MCU show. She's she's nowhere near powerful in as Hulk in the comics. It's just crazy, man. She's not even as powerful as Iron Man in the comics. It, it's oh man, dude. Half of the sentient beings in the universe. Now compare this to how the MCU's newest ne'er do well on the block is being established. He Who Remains, one of Kang's many multiversal personas, is ostensibly a solitary guardian of what he refers to as the sacred timeline. I After like this, this version dude. of Kang is killed by Sylvie, the timeline is fractured. 
thus setting in motion the thematic I'm underpinning of the rest of the second act of the MCU. And this act ostensibly screwed up the multiverse bad enough to allow Kang the Conqueror to take over the Time Variance Authority, aka the TVA, as seen in the Loki season 1 post credit scene. Loki was pretty good, everything. and it made me He's like seen Kang. everything, he knows everything, it's complicated, okay? But this just doesn't sit right, does it? Thanos was used sparingly before his full debut. The Avengers and the various other MCU teams usually came into contact with representatives or generals in his armies, i.e. Loki, the Chitauri, and Ronan the Accuser. Narratively, this was done for two reasons. To make Thanos seem more powerful, like more of a threat, and also so that the Avengers didn't have the opportunity to ever defeat him. You need a narrative suspension of disbelief when you finally have these characters fight. We all know the Avengers are going to win, but what if? What if they don't? Which is exactly what Marvel played with when having Thanos actually able to accomplish his goal of obtaining all five Infinity Stones. We don't have this suspension of disbelief with Kang because literally in his first appearance- I get what he's saying. He's saying you need foreplay. You need build up. And that is a good point. But I, st I was still enjoying everything we've got of Kang so far. I enjoyed him. I enjoyed him in Loki. I thought Loki was a good build because you don't see him till the final episode of Loki. So the whole Loki season one was kind of a good build up to him. So I enjoyed him Loki. I enjoyed him in Ant Man three. Uh, if he's gone now, like as the he was supposed to be the villain for. I think he was supposed to be the main big bad villain. I think the main big bad villain for uh, phase six was like Secret Wars or Galactus or something. I'm not sure. But he was supposed to be the main big bad for one of the phases. But now if the dude's getting locked up, how's that? They, 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 they're like, oh, crap. We built this entire, like, we built this entire six movie build up. For this character and now it's all wrecked which to be fair disney kind of deserves his variant gets killed so here we are quantumania it's less of an actual ant-man and the wasp film and more just an extended two hour 150 million dollar trailer for phase five of the mcu in the film we learn that janet van dyne during her time being trapped in the quantum realm befriended and worked with kang in an effort to escape the dimensional plane he tricked janet into thinking he was just a scientist lost in the quantum realm however over the course of attempting to repair his time chair janet links with it and realizes that he's a desk spot who's been imprisoned there entire worlds entire timelines gone and here's where the film does a massive disservice to the universe building of kang as a big bad in the third act of the film kang is overpowered by an army of super intelligent ants how did those ants end up in the quantum realm? They're hyper evolved from an ant farm that was sent there in the first movie? Is that when that happened? Who can even remember? This is just the most convenient deus machina to end all deus machinas. A lot of ants. Maybe He Who Remains wasn't as physically intimidating of a Kang, okay, that's fine. But then this Kang, the one called Kang the Conqueror, is the Kang that's going to be awesome, right? No, he gets taken out by some ants. And then, later he gets punched into the multiversal power core by Ant-Man. That's two appearances by Kang in the MCU and three defeats. That's a mathematical equation that shouldn't be possible, but hey, here we are. During Janet's vision, we literally see Kang the Conqueror destroying worlds of people, armies, by himself. We see him taking apart entire timelines, but some okay, ants, I, I, an ex-con, and an point. absolutely terrible adaptation of MODOK are enough to defeat him? It I just see, feels like I such see, a letdown. I that doesn't make point. any sense. But you know what? Who said life has to make sense? Okay, back to Kang. This is all to say nothing of the fact that he's positioned as an all-powerful and literally melts a dude's head in the beginning of the siege of his citadel. 
And then, whenever the protagonists are around, he just seems to forget that he's capable of firing literally death-inducing lasers from his hands at will. Thanos' characterization was always on point. When he showed up in the MCU, every scene had an immense sense of gravity to it. And because of his limited screen time in the run up to Infinity War, the anticipation was compounded. But with Kang, it feels like Marvel has forgotten all of those lessons. Yeah, and that Thanos was menacing, dude. Menacing. Like, he, he's, not, he's not that scary looking, but his presence was like as scary as like Vigo the Carpathian, right? As far as like, oh man, if this dude's after you, oh, you know, like, um, which what if kind of ruined because there was a whole episode where they were circle jerking with wokeism about Black Panther and they just completely, they completely, uh, nerfed, they completely nerfed Thanos for the benefit of whatever whatever that dude who played black panthers at uh what if episode i was like well that's dumb you just like he, he, all literally 15 years a, 15 years of build up and 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 dozens and dozens and dozens of film crew uh did the character building to make thanos at, and josh brolin so well and then you guys just nerfed him for shits and giggles that's that's lame they're drunk with power off of selling Thanos lunchboxes, and they've convinced themselves that people love the villains. So, the more Kangs, the better. Right? Just wait till you meet my variants. Not only that, but Quantumania feels like the wrong movie to debut Kang the Conqueror in. If you're going to do a universe-spanning story about him jumping between timelines, then you should introduce him in a Fantastic Four or an Exiles movie. They've kind of built an unsolvable puzzle box for themselves. How do you make a villain that the audience knows isn't special, because there's an alternate timeline version of himself coming in the next film, feel special? This narrative conundrum is at the core of everything wrong with Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. It is a story that has completely forgotten the golden rule of the MCU, focus on the characters. Quantumania, despite having lavish special effects and a theoretically sprawling scope, actually has a very small scale. The film's only real idea is that Janet has a dark past and accidentally aided a war criminal. But the film never really deals with that on any meaningful level. The potential development of Janet is just used as a means to shoehorn Kang into the MCU. This film is so disinterested in the primary cast, one of the titular characters, Wasp, is barely in it. What's the arc of Scott Lang over the course of the movie? What lesson does he learn? What skill does he acquire? That he's a better dad? But not even really. Hey, Dad. Cassie. Everything about this film feels like it takes a backseat to the introduction of Kang, which the film practically does backflips to incorporate, and yet what they accomplish with him is next to meaningless. Doesn't set Kang up for future adventures and provides zero greater connection for his motivation going forward. Hey, aren't you excited to see all the new Kangs defeated the first time they show up? That's ostensibly what this movie is informing the audience of. And to add insult to injury, both post credit scenes feature new Kangs, multiple of them. But why should we care? We know where this is going. At the end of the day, what does this big screen version of Kang do best? Die. Which, if this trend isn't corrected quickly, could be the fate of the MCU as a whole. Well, that's all we have for this episode. What do you yeah. think? Was Kang handled well in quantum? I'm glad, I'm glad um, normies are starting to see it. Norm, like even, even, uh, even nerd nostalgic is like, you know, the MCU is probably gonna die. And usually, guys like this are are pretty lenient. They're pretty lenient on, um, Disney and Marvel and the MCU. They're not, they're not super critical like I am because of ideology. But yeah, it's probably gonna die. <laughs> You can even if you give us a an incredible banger every every now and again, like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three allegedly is, um, that's just a one off. That's just a one off because of like James Gunn or a one off of No Way Home because Sony made it, not Marvel Studios. Uh, 
so yeah I, I, I don't know if MCU is probably gonna die but it's fun it's fun to talk about it's fun to speculate anyways I appreciate you guys for watching this video please like subscribe and all that um 96% of my viewers are not yet subscribed so please join the subscriber bar down at the bottom um so, yeah so we can get that up I'm on BitChute I'm on Odyssey, I post a Minds, Twitter, you know, whatever you want to follow me on. I'm on Twitch right there. Stream over there sometimes. Video games. There's going to be another video popping up right there. If you haven't had enough of my, my talking, my rambling, I appreciate you guys. Please like that video. Helps the algorithm. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.